Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the LWRC SMG45 chambered in 45 ACP. Well, this has been a very controversial uh, firearm uh, since it was first debuted around uh, 2019 is when they actually started shipping. Uh, 2015 was when it was first shown at the SHOT Show. This is the first attempt, I'm going to say attempt, by LWRCI to make a pistol caliber submachine gun. And uh, this was at the request of a foreign customer. Uh, they wanted it in 45 automatic. So literally, LWRCI went from the ground up. They stick a lot of their patented technology, which we'll see from the lower receiver. We'll see the same safety, the same ambi uh, bolt release. Uh, of course, the magazine catches the paddle style. Now, the magazine that they chose to use on here is the HK UMP 45 magazine, 25 round magazine. Uh, this magazine has generally been a very durable magazine. Um, I have to say that uh, this, this did have to go back, which we're going to get into. The first magazine I had was bad. Uh, basically, the shot column was getting stuck uh, because the tips of the bullets were, uh, were, it, were, were catching on something on the inside. So the rounds weren't actually uh, going up the shot column. So they had to replace uh, one of the magazines. But uh, the magazines are straight. Uh, they do load relatively easy. They are double single, so they actually do uh, feed from a single. It's not like a, a standard, like a Uzi where you have side by side. So uh, what we're looking at here is a rather unique and its operation as well. It is a, it's a delayed blowback, but uses short recoil. As we can see, the barrel pushes in, inward like so, which is going to be uh, a point of contention for as far as accuracy. Now, when you look at this thing, the fit and finish is absolutely gorgeous. It's what you come to expect from LWRCI. However, the problem exists in accuracy, uh, and it did from day one. Uh, there are many uh, content creators out there who've done videos on this. They've done follow-up videos on it because the, uh, the firearm had significant accuracy issues. In fact, the first time this went out, and I do want to uh, do a call-out to uh, my friend and student, John, for allowing me to borrow this because I've been trying to get one for quite some time to review. Um, uh, he had loaned me this to, to do a quick review on and ended up taking a little bit of time because uh, when we first took it out, the shooting, we were shooting around 8 MOA at 25 yards. Now, uh, you had consistent flyers. That was the only thing that was consistent about it was you knew you were going to have flyers. Now, of course, at 25 yards uh, with you know a SIG MPX or pretty much any other pistol caliber carbine or pistol, you're generally doing around an inch, inch and a half. They, they generally go right where they need to be. So when we shot this and it was a eight inch group, uh, it was, you know, it was quite disturbing. And doing some internet research, we were seeing the exact same thing that other people were seeing. So uh, I had also had a significant amount of malfunctions with it. Uh, they were all failures to eject and failures to feed. So um, I was, to my understanding from John, that was the first person to really fire this. So uh, the ammunition we used was good ammunition. It was Black Hills 230 grain full metal jacket ball. We had some Syntec Federal uh, 230 grain ball. I had some Remington. It was all ball ammunition that we shot. So there should have been no uh, issues with feeding whatsoever. So um, as you can see from the photographs, again, failures to eject, which basically stovepipe. Uh, we had seen uh, numerous failures to feed uh, from the magazine. And again, ball ammunition, you don't expect this. So the... Gun went back to LWRC. Uh, I sent it back, and uh, they got it back to me probably within two to three weeks. And they gave me a whole list of parts that they had replaced on it. So we took it back out to the range. Except this time, we had no issues whatsoever mechanically. Uh, whether we had it suppressed or unsuppressed, we had we had no issues. Uh, and quite frankly, the suppressor being on there had no bearing uh, whatsoever on whether this was reliable or not. Um, and accuracy, uh, uh, once we started shooting it after we came back about three and a half inches, and we would still get flyers. Now, again, we went down about half for as far as, uh, as the group size. However, it still wasn't accurate enough where I would want to use this as a law enforcement or a personal defense gun because, again, when you put that dot right on that target, especially if you have a smaller target, you really aren't sure where it's going to go. So as nice as it was, as reliable as it was, there was not the accuracy that was there that you would want for a self-defense firearm. Um, for as far as LWRC is concerned, evidently three, you know, th you know, three and a half inches was acceptable for, for this particular gun, which is very uh, unusual because LWRC makes some of the finest 5.56 five, and if not the finest 6.8 rifles in the world. Uh, their precision and their accuracy is legendary uh, for as far as semi-automatic and, and even automatic weapons go. 
this was a far departure uh, from what they normally put out. And you can see a lot of money went into the development. So then when we start looking at why uh, we saw these, we see these accuracy issues. And my opinion is it has to do with the operating system because to explain the inconsistencies uh, in, in the shot, the problem is the way the gun locks up. And again, this does not lock up like a regular blowback where it's just a spring is, is closing it. As you see, when it comes back and forth, you do have a, a basically a ramp that the bolt goes onto, which locks it in place until it, until it fires. And then of course it pushes rearward. My opinion is anyways, that it's not locking up consistently because of the way this locking system works. Now, for as far as recoil reduction mechanism is concerned, the recoil reduction is, is incredible on this thing. This is lighter than any 45 caliber semi-medic uh, submachine gun I've ever fired. Um, fast, fast uh, follow-up shots. I mean, everything about this, this, this gun is great, except it does not have the precision accuracy that it should. The suppressor I put on here is the Osprey uh, 45 by Silencer Co. Now, you do need the Nielsen device or the booster for this to work because of the fact that this is a recoil operated. This is not a standard blowback. So you do have a reciprocating mass. So you do have to have the booster to help, uh, you know, to push that along so you get the reliability with it. So of course we can just, we unscrew that. And we have a, a five, seven, eight to 28 right hand threads on here. And it does come with a thread protector as well, which is obviously necessary. So as you, as you saw from the targets that we showed, there is a significant issue with uh, accuracy for as far as precision goes with this. So let's start taking a look at how this, uh, this, this weapon works. Now, this does come with a uh, pistol brace on here. This is not an inexpensive firearm, uh, and, I, and I think that's probably what surprised me the most. You're looking at $3,000 for one of these. Now, for as far as the accuracy, once they did the upgrades to it, you have a very reliable, very soft recoiling very nice firearm, but you just don't have that precision. And again, for $3,000, I have a hard time uh, spending that kind of money, no matter how nice the gun is, if it doesn't shoot properly. So it does come with a pistol brace on here. Now, if you SBR this, there is an attachment where you can put the uh, AR-15 M16 type receiver extension on here. So you can have a telescopic stock on here as well. Um, most of these have been sold as pistol with the pistol braces on there. Again, because of the accuracy issue, I'm unaware of any uh, military or law enforcement sales because it's not a unique problem to an individual uh, weapon. It's it's across the board. So with the pistol brace, you do have the, the side folding capability. And of course, it, it will fire uh, reliably uh, with the, uh, the, the pistol brace being closed. Now, for as far as the magazine, you have, again, a paddle, which is ambidextrous. So you can remove that. Charging handle. You have a ambidextrous charging handle that's forward. This can be swapped from side to side, depending on which way you want it. Again, it's non-reciprocating. When we just assemble this, we'll see how that comes apart. You have the LWRCI, their, their pistol grip, which is quite comfortable. You have the ambidextrous safety, which is a standard on all their guns. Ambidextrous bolt catch and release on both sides. So you'll see that on both sides as well. Now, the lower, basically, is 775T6 aircraft grade aluminum. So you have... Uh, so you have basically your standard materials that you would use on a regular AR-15 M16. You do also have their special trigger here, which you have the uh, nickel boron coating on it. Gives you a nice smooth uh, trigger pull. The barrel we have, what we're typically expect from uh, LWRCI, we have a cold hammer forged barrel. It's a chromoly uh, steel. It's, it's threaded, of course. Uh, and again, when you do put the suppressor on it, you do need the Nielsen device or the booster on it. And it's, uh, it's 8.5 inches, so you have a relatively small barrel. Now, of course, with a 45 ACP, Obviously, this is a great length because you're going to bring up all the propellant and get the maximum velocity out of it, which will still be subsonic with the 230 grain ball. So let's take a look at how this thing does work. Again, we open up. We can lock the bolt to the rear. We can release. So disassembly so we can take a look a little bit in the inside. We have the standard uh, pivot pins, which this is not pivot. You push inward on both sides. And basically, you're just taking the, the, the grip module and dropping it right down. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this, uh, this charging handle in the front here, too. So we're just going to push that forward. And we're going to pull that right out. We drop the, the, the pistol brace right off. And now we can drop out the bolt mechanism. So once we see in here, 
you can see how that bolt, that uh, barrel is reciprocating back and forth, being recoil operated. And you can also see that there is a slight taper on here. Well, that mates up with the bottom that you see right here to lock into place. You can see the feed ramp uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the grip module here. Now looking at the bolt, again, we have a bolt. We have, the, we have the recoil spring. We have the buffer in the rear. We have a massive bolt. The, the ejector is part of the inside of the receiver, so it's not part of the, uh, the bolt. You have your extractor on the side here. And you can see you have what appears to be sort of a piston on the top here. But again, this is recoil for the recoil operation. Big heavy mass. You're not going to get any kind of uh, much recoil out of it due to this, but also due to the locking system. Now, this is not disassembled any further from this. Uh, to remove the firing pin, you, you have to hammer it out with a drift pin. You do have a firing pin safety on here as well, which is a very good idea due to the fact that this is pistol ammunition. Pistol ammunition, you have a much lighter primer than you do on a rifle. So slam firing, uh, that's why you see with all the 9mm PCCs that you have, you have a uh, spring on the firing pin because just, a, just that inertia is enough to set a cartridge off for the most part. So this has a, instead of just having just a spring, this also has a firing pin safety like a pistol. So uh, this is not going to go off unless the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear. Again, looking at the grip module here, you do have the standard, uh, just the standard trigger mechanism, but we do have some modifications to it. If you notice here, we have a guard in here. One of the problems that happens with the 9mm in any of these submachine, any submachine guns is with the blowback mechanism, you have an extremely high cyclic rate, which means the bolt's opening at a very, very high velocity. And that's knocking this hammer back, and that would strike the back of the disconnector, which gives you trigger slap, and it also damages the back of the disconnector. Uh, those of you who've watched my video on a, in a modified hammer that I did with uh, Monty LeClaire over Centurion Arms, we basically take this whole back right off, so this, this whole back, nothing can strike the back of the disconnector. Well, what they did was they basically cut back the tip of the, the hammer, and they put a shroud on the top of here, so there's no way for that hammer to strike the disconnector. So that eliminates that problem you have right there. And again, we can see the, the ambidextrous bolt, bolt catch, bolt release. And again, we have the feed ramp on here as well. So looking at the barrel, looking at the barrel. Now this will come out, uh, but you have to basically unscrew this. And I see no reason for us to take the barrel, the barrel assembly apart. But uh, basically, this is where I feel that the the problem is with the accuracy is the way this locks up because it's not locking up the same way every time. Uh, so that has that's literally uh, what my opinion is. You know, the funny thing is, is this thing is just so nicely made. And it's, it's hard to believe that the accuracy doesn't look as good as the gun does. Now for reassembly, you're going to reassemble the bolt. So we're going to drop the for reassembly. We're going to drop the bolt carrier back into place. We're going to insert the latch. And again, we're going to stay on this side right here because of the fact that we're I'm right hand right handed. Make sure our our barrels all the way forward. We're going to drop our stock back into place. When we drop the receiver back in, it just drops straight into place. There you have it. Now on here we did add the uh, the Embus Pro does come on it for the the backup sights. And I did add this Holosun uh, EMS. Uh, site on here as well. You do see we have solar power on there as well. This was an excellent site. So we're going to get into the videos now from the range footage. Now the first footage that we're going to take a look at was the first time that this weapon went out, and we're going to have and you're going to be able to see some of the malfunctions, uh, and you'll see that the failures to feed and the failures to uh, eject happen regardless whether we had the sound suppressor on it or not.
as you also saw from the target on there, you were looking at eight inches, and that was pretty average for what the gun was doing at 25 yards off of a bench. And again, to make sure I wasn't having an off day, I had my SIG MPX out that day, and I shot at the same range uh, with it, and I was I was just around an inch to inch and a half uh, dead center where it was supposed to be. So we knew it wasn't me, we knew it was the firearm. And as we said earlier on in the video, uh, after I got it back, I had contacted LWRC and told them what was going on. They gave me a return authorization number, um, and they sent me a, a call tag, and we sent the gun back to them. And again, it was a few weeks. Uh, it came back, and we took it back out to the range. Okay, as you can see from the range footage this time, no malfunctions of any sort, suppressed or unsuppressed. But when we started looking at the groups, the groups tightened down. They tightened down to, you know, half. They were just around four inches. Uh, and we did get some that were slightly less, but none of them were what I would consider uh, appropriate for a gun that would be used for self-defense. Because again, if you had a hostage type target and you were to take a shot, you were not sure where that shot's going to go because you do have those flyers. So overall with this, again, you know, it's a, it's a beautifully made gun. The accuracy is the problem. The reliability is there. The light recoil is there. Marksmanship is there. But for as far as the price tag of $3,000, no. Uh, if you always want a range toy, uh, it's fine. But if you want something to use in the real world, uh, this is not the direction that I would go. Again, this is totally unlike LWRC. Any of you guys who see me do videos on LWRC, I am the biggest fan. They make the nicest, they make the best 6.8 in, in, in the world, for as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they're the first ones and only ones to ever have a foreign military contract. The, their Reaper, that is the most accurate turtle piston gun in the world, for as far as I'm concerned. Um, you have a sub MOA uh, gun there. The Reaper is absolutely a gorgeous rifle. Their individual carbine, uh, external piston, excellent, excellent rifle. Uh, and their internal piston, uh, their individual carbine, they're, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I don't really know what happened with this one. Uh, you know, my guess is, is they invested so much money into it that they didn't really want to drop it. Uh, and when it did get out there into the, into the hands of the, the public, all these issues came out and they came out clear. Um, there's not been one video uh, that I've seen anyways with any of the content creators that I, I think anything of that uh, have had anything but bad luck for as far as the accuracy was concerned. Um, so overall, I would recommend this as a range toy only, uh, not for anything in the real world. 
Uh, I do hope that uh, LWRC is able to figure out in the future uh, how to get this thing so it is shooting as well as it looks and as well as it feels. Uh, but as of right now, as you know, again, we're we're looking at things been out since 2019, so we're looking at uh, you know a few years of this being out uh, if fielded. Uh, I don't think there's been too many of these that have been built uh, because of this issue. Now, also, you guys who are looking to uh, have some steel targets, take a look at our challenge targets that we have on there. We do have a code uh, SAS, which will give you 10% off of all those steel targets. So take a look at those guys. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.